In a game of politics, there are no permanent enemies and no permanent friends, only permanent interests. Charles Jonjo served the Kenyan people as Attorney General from 1963 to 1980 and was a trusted political advisor to President Moi and the Kenya's first Attorney General. Being a son of a paramount colonial chief, Josiah Jonjo, Sir Charles Jonjo, the Duke of Kabeteshire, had everything a lady would look for in a man. He was well schooled in the United Kingdom, was a high ranking government official, and had all resources at the doorstep. But Jonjo never intended to marry an African girl, let alone a woman from Kabete where he was born. He chose to remain a member of Kenya's senior bachelor's club until he later married Margaret Bryson in 1972 when he was 52 years. Charles Jonjo played a pivotal role in President Daniel Moy's ascendancy to power upon the passing of founding President Jomo Kenyatta. Jonjo's friendship with Moy had manifested itself way back in 1965 a year after assuming office as Attorney General and ex-officio member of Parliament and Cabinet. It happened that while riding with Kenyatta in his presidential limousine from Kisumu to Kericho, he fronted Moi's name for the vacant position of Vice President and to which the President accepted. Although he swiftly dismissed Moi's regime as a passing cloud, Jonjo would rise to become the country's most powerful man after Moi, but this never materialized. Moi gripped to power for close to three decades. In 1983, Jonjo fell out with Moi. Moi beat the finger that fed him. What really led to friends turned enemies between Sir Charles Jonjo and former president Daniel Arap Moi? Here is the story of the rise and fall of the former Duke of Kabeteshire, Sir Charles Mugane Jonjo. Charles Mugane Jonjo was Kenya's first attorney general other than the country's president. He was by far the most powerful man in public life. Towards the end of the rule of Kenya's first president, Jomo Kenyatta, he played a critical role in ensuring that Kenyatta's long-serving vice president, Daniel Arap Moi, was the one who succeeded to the presidency when Kenyatta died. Early life and education. Born with the proverbial silver spoon in his mouth, the son of colonial paramount chief Josiah Jonjo was born at Kibichiku Kabete in Kiambu district on 23rd January 1920 in a prominent family of four brothers and four sisters, three of whom are alive at the time of creating this video. The young Jonjo led a pampered life and was said to ride to the local work. Wagatero Primary School in Lower Kabete on a horse accompanied by a servant. His father was one of the foremost collaborators of the British in Kenya. The school was associated with the heavily bearded Canon Leakey, the pastor in charge of the nearby Protestant church, now the Anglican Church of Kenya, ACK, Mother Church Kabete. Later, Jonjo joined the prestigious Alliance High School in nearby Kikuyu, sharing a class with Jeremiah Nyaga, who le would later on become a colleague in the cabinet. For a boy used to the comforts of a colonial chief's home, Alliance was quite tough. Students showered with cold water and did not wear shoes. It is at Alliance where Jonjo tested Ugali for the first time. In 1939, Jonjo joined King's College, Budo, in Uganda for a two-year pre-university course. He was in the same class as Frederick Mutesa, who later became the Kabaka or King of the Baganda Kingdom. After Budo, his father wanted him to go to the UK for further studies, but this was not to be. Instead, he enrolled at Fort Harry University in South Africa for three years to study administration, sociology, and South African criminal law in addition to Latin. After completing his studies, Jonjo returned to Kenya for one month before flying to the United Kingdom to join Exeter University for a postgraduate course in public administration. He completed his studies at Exeter in 1947 and proceeded to register at the London School of Economics until 1950. He thereafter studied law for four years before he was called to the bar at Gray's Inn. On his return to Kenya from Britain in 1954, he was employed by the colonial government as a high court registrar serving in Mombasa. 
he was soon promoted to Registrar General and moved to the Attorney General's office as Senior Crown Counsel in 1955. He served diligently as a colonial government lawyer during the troubled emergency period, in the course of which the government committed atrocities against Kenyans. One year before independence, the diligent Jonjo was promoted to the powerful position of Deputy Public Prosecutor, a heartbeat away from the position of Attorney General. When Jomo Kenyatta became Prime Minister, he was appointed Attorney General and when Kenya became a republic in 1964, he became an ex officio member of parliament and the cabinet. During his 17-year service at Sharia House as Attorney General, Jonjo occasionally shocked the nation by expressing views that were diametrically opposed to the country's foreign policy or even that of the Organization of African Unity. OAU, not to mention prevailing local sentiments. Being a son of a paramount colonial chief, Josiah Jonjo, Jonjo had everything a lady would look for in a man. He was well-schooled in the United Kingdom, was a high-ranking government official, and had all resources at the doorstep. But Kenya's debonair attorney general never intended to marry an African girl, let alone a woman from Kabete where he was born. He chose to remain a member of Kenya's senior bachelor's club until he later married Margaret Bryson, 34, daughter of white Christian missionary and a supervisor of French instruction for Kenya's Ministry of Education, both for the first time in Nairobi in 1972 when he was 52 years. The puzzle around Jonjo's choice was that he knew ladies from his own local were untamable, undomesticated, and not good for marriage. Kenya's first head of civil service, Duncan Degwa, in his biography, Walking in Kenyatta Struggles, noted that, though Jonjo, Jomo Kenyatta's legal advisor, had no wife at 50, he still had a mountain of fears to court Kabete girls, despite one who was in government trying to win him, but to no avail. Degwa revealed that Jomo thoroughly enjoyed the sideshows, staring at the Attorney General and Margaret Wanjiro Koinange. Kenya's then matron-in-chief, who was smitten by the dapper attorney general with a penchant of lunchtime wine sessions while working barefoot in his office. Jonjo had Kenyatta's ear and was consulted often, making him a very powerful man in every sphere. So close a confidant of Kenyatta was the attorney general that he was credited with recommending Moi as Kenya's third vice president after resignation of Joseph Murumbi, a proposal Kenyatta gave favorable consideration. Jonjo's camaraderie with Moi had manifested itself way back in 1965, a year after assuming more office as attorney general and ex-officio member of parliament and cabinet. It happened that while riding with Kenyatta in his presidential limousine from Kisumu to Kericho, he fronted Moi's name for the vacant position of vice president. At the time, Joseph Murumbi had just unexpectedly resigned from his position and Kenyatta was wondering loudly whom he would pick as his replacement. And when Kenyatta asked Jonjo if he had anyone in mind to assume the second in command, he quickly fronted Moi's name, and to which the president accepted. Moi was then Minister for Home Affairs, was chosen for his subdued demeanor and loyalty that portrayed him as a safe pair of hands. According to Jonjo, Kenyatta was so pleased with this proposal that he appointed Moi as VP the very next day, exposing Jonjo's grip on power and his influence around the president. Jonjo was to later shield Moi from the change, the constitution movement, a grouping of central Kenya legislators who were opposed to Moi succeeding Kenyatta. As Attorney General and later as Cabinet Minister, Jonjo was an authoritarian for the law, which was why he stood firm on the whole issue of the Kenyatta succession when he insisted that the country must follow the constitutional path. The constitution provided that in the event of the death or in capacity of the sitting president, the vice president would take over for 90 days before fresh elections were held. In 1976, when Mzes' health started failing, therefore, 
the Attorney General caught out fighting in opposition to a potentially divisive and destructive campaign by a lobby group fronted by Kiambu politicians Joroge Mungai and Jenga Karume. Nakuru Kingpin Kiheka Kimani, the King of Meru, Harvester Angain, and his Ukambani counterpart, Paul Joseph Gay and others. They were determined to amend the constitution to bar Vice President Moi from automatically succeeding Kenyatta upon his death. The group's Change the Constitution campaign reached a crescendo when it held a charged rally in Nakuru at which Gay controversially asked Kenyans to give him the reins of power for just three days and declared openly that he would never relinquish the position. An ally of Moi, Jonjo rejected the group's proposals in a heated debate in the National Assembly and accused them of imagining the death of the president, which he informed them was treasonable. You do not change the constitution by the roadside. He told the group to stop imagining the death of the president and instead take the amendment to parliament. The group's scheme was successfully thwarted by the combined force of Moi and his supporters, who included Finance Minister Moi Kibaki, along with Jonjo, who quite likely had personal motives of investing in their own political future. When Kenyatta died on 22nd August 1978, and was succeeded by Moi, Jonjo retained his position as Attorney General as he had anticipated. But with the added reputation of being a kingmaker and a defender of the constitution and democracy, the Attorney General's relationship with Moi, however, turned temporarily frosty a few weeks into the latter's presidency when Jonjo was quoted by the media as allegedly saying that Moi regime was nothing but a passing cloud. The whole of Labalu soon faded away and the damage quickly repaired. As Attorney General under Moi, Jonjo cultivated his relationship with the new head of state to such an extent that the two became inseparable, a team that was expanded to include the Minister of Internal Security, Gigi Karaoke. The trio rode in the presidential limousine as Moi crisscrossed the country, consolidating his authority and introducing his Nyayo philosophy on Meet the People Tours Harambe fundraisers, inspection of development projects, and attendance at church services. When he hit 60, having put in 17 years of service as Attorney General, Jonjo felt it was time to move on. In an orchestrated and well choreographed move, he called a press conference to announce his resignation as Attorney General and his intention to contest the Kikuyu parliamentary seat only a day after the incumbent MP resigned to allow Jonjo to vie for the seat. Exactly as expected, Jonjo easily won the seat and transformed himself into a politician overnight. As part of the orchestrated changes, he was appointed cabinet minister in the specially minted Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, a position he held until 1983. The ministry strategically roped in the judiciary and, as it was during his days as attorney general, Jonjo worked closely with the national security apparatus, making him the single most powerful person after the president. In parliament, where he was in his element owing to his superior grasp of the English language and access to classified information, Jonjo was admired and feared in equal measure. Rightly or wrongly, he was associated with Moy's excesses, including the arrests, and torture of perceived dissidents and detentions without a trial. His popularity suffered when he introduced bills and constitutional changes seen as oppressive and others aimed at creating what came to be called an imperial president. Owing to the perception that he was misadvising Moi to brutalize his opponents and to implement tough government policies, Jonjo met with staff. Jonjo was met with stiff opposition from parliament, especially from a group of seven young and highly intelligent MPs, namely Koigi Wabamwere, Masheng, Mashengu Wamachofi, James Orengo, Chilagut Mutai, Abuya Abuya, Onyango Midika and Lawrence Sifuna. Come the 1st August 1982 attempted coup by elements of the Kenya Air Force and Jonjo's massive political edifice started slowly crumbling. After the past failed, and as military elements were caught, marshaled, and politicians taken to court, Moi decided to purge the ruling party 
Kenya African National Union, KANU, and the cabinet of figures he believed wanted him out of power. Chief among them was Jonjo and the equally powerful internal minister, security minister, Gigi Karaoke. In yet another well choreographed plan, which included finger pointing in parliament against anti Moi elements, real or imagined, Jonjo was eventually named the traitor by fellow cabinet minister Elijah Mongale. What followed was a protracted judicial commission of inquiry presided over by the eccentric Justice Cicely Miller of Jamaican descent. In the end, the inquiry concluded that Jonjo was guilty of abuse of office and that he had tried to take over power from President Moy. He was forced to resign from government, actively destroying his political career. For many political observers, it was hard to imagine how Jonjo would gamble with and destroy his career spanning 22 years by trying to overthrow the man he fought so hard to establish in State House after Kenyatta's death in 1978. The man on whose behalf he almost single-handedly managed the transition and for whom he gambled all, including risking estrangement from his native Kikuyu community. Jonjo insisted he had no intention of overthrowing Mui, saying the whole thing was hatched by people who thought he was too powerful and wanted him out of the power equation. More than a decade after Jonjo had left the political scene, he returned to public life when Moi appointed him chairman of Kenya Wildlife Service in 1998. But Moi was in his last term as president and his successor Mwai Kibaki, who came to power in 2002, had little time for Jonjo, especially after Jonjo probably out of spite publicly showed some support for Kibaki's political arch rival, Raila Odinga. In October 2006, Jonjo unsuccessfully attempted a political comeback by supporting opposition leader Raila Amolo Odinga. Jonjo was one of the richest people in Kenya with extensive land holding across the country. He also owns interest in high-profile financial institutions, including banks and insurance companies. Charles Jonjo kept himself busy in a number of charitable organizations as well as in business, but politically, he quietly faded from the public limelight. Jonjo succumbed to pneumonia aged 101 on Sunday, January 2nd, 2022, at his home in Mothaiga, Nairobi. His body was, thereafter, taken to the Lee funeral home where it was prepared for intermittent. Jonjo's family then proceeded to Karyoko Hindu crematorium where the former attorney general was cremated in the morning. We shall never change our political leaders until we change the people who elect them. Mark Skozen. <laughs>